Hi guys. Um, my name is Katie and I am a trainee, um, for becoming a master, well, not a master, but just a certified, um, uh, Ascension coach. And today's my day to be the host. And, uh, today we are doing signs of, um, you found your twin flame and, uh, yeah, we were going to start off with, uh, referencing to the book. Lydia, did you want to get started? Yes. Hello, my name is Lydia. We're here with Kanisha and Rachel. Um, so yeah, the signs you make your twin flame. So we, we have reference to Leah's book, Twin Flame Find Your Ultimate Lover. So you can always go back to this book and there are signs that you found your true twin flame and there are signs that you're in a false twin flame. But today we're talking about true twin flames. And um the first paragraph is, I had it, I'm going to jump. Okay, so your true twin flame will feel familiar to you. Nobody in this world feels as familiar and as comfortable to you as your twin flame. Not even your parents equal to familiarity uh, and kindship will feel the same to you as your twin flame. It may feel as though you've been friends for lifetimes, and this is absolutely true. The closest human friend is your twin flame. I personally, like this is so true to me because when I met my twin flame, I didn't even know his name at first. And I felt like I knew him forever. It, it took me a long time to even get his name because we met in like a group setting. And the second we started talking, I feel like I knew him forever. So this is like so true. Um, it's like a very, very familiar feeling, your, your heart chakra opens up and the, the second you, you connect, it's, it's like you can't even, like when you see yourself in another, you can't even like, it's just a feeling, you can't even deny it. It's so real and so magnetic that um, I personally, like, honestly, I've chosen him above anyone in all the years that I've known him, mainly because of this just like home feeling and, you know, it's just, it's only with the true twin flame. So I can say that this is true. <laughs> um, so, um, so there's enough. Yeah. So Rachel. Thank you, Lydia. Yeah, I can certainly relate to <clears throat> a lot of um, what you were saying there. Uh, funnily enough, I actually recorded a video today on five signs of a true twin flame. And maybe I'll, I can go into a little bit more detail about that in a little while. But certainly, um, when I met my twin flame, it was a while before I knew his name or certainly his real name. And it was a very long time before I knew the exact color of his eyes because you know, we, we looked into each other's eyes and just fell into them. Like I didn't see pupils. I just saw depth. It was. Yeah, it was, it was pretty indescribable. And that, I mean, that was 15 years ago, and that has never left me. And that light in their eyes is still there. I mean, sometimes a person can see that in somebody's eyes because they see their twin flame in them. But when that lesson is learned, that sort of fades. But if it stays, if it deepens, then that's... A uh, pretty good sign. Yeah, um, I did want to share uh, my experience um, as well. And just kind of like uh, shed light to the, the opposite. Like some people do meet their twin flames and like it's not like, oh my gosh, like the heavens like open up. Um, and like for me, when I met my twin flame um, in person, like when we first like met, it was like through um, a dating website website and like the what I noticed the most was like wow like we are just like hitting the mark when it comes to like everything that we have um in common but when we met it was like just like that feeling of coming home and it, it you it's like that deja vu like I've 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 met you before like I've, I've known you my whole life and um it, it like it, it was just really subtle and peaceful and it felt like I was just like having dinner with like my long lost best friend and um I can't really remember like 
if we did a bunch of eye gazing, but I definitely felt like um, comfortable enough to actually, he was like one of the first people that I like opened up about with my like life purpose and like didn't like feel like that um, fear. So uh, yeah, like I really um, resonate and like recognized right away. I was like, there's something different about this person. Like it's like home. And um, I find that that's always something that I hear very commonly um, around the community and around people that are um, experiencing their twin flame journey. I have a different um, experience than all of you. I met my twin flame in high school. We hated each other. We could not stand each other. We did not have that experience. <laughs> However, after being in this work for about three years, uh, we reconnected. And um, I didn't have like, any notion that he was my twin flame but I did have this overwhelming feeling that I needed to protect him I couldn't figure out why I felt that way um but I knew that I just wanted him to be protected until it feel that way about someone kind of threw me because it was just like I don't understand why I have this feeling um I do also recall coming to this understanding that I never really fell in love with him it was more of I remembered that I loved him and that I've always knew that I've always loved him. And that um, required me to have to sit with that for quite some time because it was a feeling that I had never experienced with anyone, um, especially with people that I thought I was in love with or I thought I was going to marry them. Um, with him, it was a very peaceful coming to of just this recognizing that I had, had already loved him and that I was just remembering this love that I had for him. So that was my experience of um, coming home to my twin flame and realizing that um, just as you guys said, like he is, he is my closest friend, but it's, it's hard to explain to even say like, he's my friend. It's so much more than, than that. Um, so much more than an ultimate lover. It really is like, um, like you guys said, home, it feels like home. It feels like you could be your full authentic self and that you don't have to hide, that you can just be who you truly are. That's so funny That's that nice. you uh, say that because um, I, the same thing, like I was like, you, you, you can always like pinpoint or like in the past with uh, past relationships, I was like, I can pinpoint and remember when I fell in love with my partner. And I'm like, now I'm like, I, I think I always was, like it just was always there. So I really love that. See, so, I mean, there's another paragraph that stood out to me is your lifestyle choices will align easily with your twin flame. Um, it, you can take your time to get clear on your choices together and individually. Um, I, I do remember this with my true twin flame when um, we would meet and I would share something of my life or I would share like on a date something and he would always say, oh, me too. Oh, me too. There was a lot of like, oh, me too's. And I'm just like, damn, I feel like I'm talking to myself. You know, it's like, this is when I didn't even know we were twin flames. So it's so beautiful now that we have this work. We do have this signs. So you can go faster through the, um, to identifying your true twin flame. Because a lot of us many years ago, when we met our twin flames, we didn't even know. We were just going with our hearts. And now that we know, and you know, we, you feel you know, the, the, the signs in your heart. I'm just like, oh my gosh, all along, I knew. I just didn't really technically know. So, you know, like every time I would share something of like my childhood or my, my vision for the future, it always aligned. Like, even though sometimes I feel like they might not express it exactly how you expect them to, the feeling is the same of, you know, uh, like a choice. So it's it's always that, you know, you, you definitely feel like you're, you're aligned, you're connected. And, you know, you can definitely go ahead and share yourself authentically. And they're always there to meet you exactly where you're at. So I feel like that's a really good sign, like, um, you know, sharing the same vision in life. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Uh, same vision, um, same dreams, same values. But, um, like you've already touched on it a couple of times, uh, I'd like to re really emphasize that it doesn't have to look the same or even similar on the outside. I mean, that's probably true for most people, just because you're very, 
for example, you may be very um, overtly into spiritual stuff and your twin flame doesn't appear to be. That doesn't mean you're not twin flames. Uh, your person might have, you know, they'll have their own things. I might like playing squash or, or going out on their motorbike or something. And once you go deeper, you actually realize that it's all the same values at the core because that's their method for feeling good. And it's a method that they've got that's, that they've probably been doing for years and they have it very developed. So it's not about you like imposing your own formula on them. I mean, you don't have to be doing the same things at the same time. All the time, you just both do what makes you tick, what makes you happy. You will be living one life together when you harmonise your lives and everything. So, um, so if there does appear to be some sort of a mismatch, it's okay. <laughs> no need to panic. It's just a sign to uh, go deeper. And you'll find that there aren't any misalignments at the core. So as Jeff and Shalia say, it's just misunderstandings on the surface. Yeah, yeah there's uh, having to also doing the inner work and going to God to help clear up any place that where it may look like you're not aligning. Um, I know I experienced with my twin flame we both have very busy schedules and it was looking like somehow we weren't fitting each other into our schedule. Like I couldn't figure out how that would work. And so I had to feel my feelings around it and get clear on really what I was putting before my union and all of these things that were kind of just distractions to kind of fill space. And uh, as I healed that, there was an opportunity for me and my twin flame to align in the same job. And um, I could have easily like tried to control and been like, well, I can do this. Let me get in here. Um, but I just had surrendered it. And he actually invited me into that space. That was um, a big thing for me to recognize was that I had seen the opening and I chose and claim it, but I wanted to make sure that that was what was in alignment for our union instead of trying to just control and see if I can like spend as much time with him as possible. And he naturally invited me into that space and it actually aligned with um, the rest of our schedule. We were able to see each other uh, pretty periodic periodically throughout the week and we were able to do a lot of life purpose healing in that space and so you never have to try to control or, or try to make something happen you just heal the block and go to god and god will make a way to align your your life even more harmoniously in that space nice um that's beautiful. So another thing for, for me is, um, especially when I got to know the inner work and um, started healing and loving myself, I realized that, you know, my twin flame keeps showing up in my life constantly. Like, even when uh, yeah, I just surrender and I'm just like, okay, I don't even care if it's him, if it's not him. And there he goes, he shows up again and again, exactly when I least expect it. So another really good sign is someone that that is just forever drawn to you. Um, and you just, it's just like a feeling that you just can't let go of that is always connected to you in your heart. And of course, you know, in the person, your true twin flame, it's always ignited within when this person is in your presence and you're always manifesting them in your reality. That's like a, a really good time you met your true twin flame because, um, you know, I mean, you can definitely get clear here to, you know, by loving yourself and making sure that you are in alignment and this person is your true twin flame, but, um, you know, something that someone that keeps showing up, you, can, you can't get rid of your true twin flame. They are always there, whether they're triggering you, loving you, hating you, it, it's all love in, you know, different ways, but definitely um, I find this to be true. Mine just is always there, you know, just when I'm, and I'm moving on with my life. There he goes, hey. Or I remember one night I was like out and I literally was out on a date with someone else. And I was like completely disconnected at the time with the truth twin flame. I didn't even like um, have the work yet to work on myself. I just was going with my intuition and my heart. And I was trying to control and go on another date. And literally I'm on the date and I could not stand that guy. 
And I believe in my heart. I was calling in my true twin flame. I was just like, oh, my God, I can't even, like, be here any longer. And then my phone rings. It's my true twin flame. He's like, hey, are you out tonight? And I'm like, how did you know? I ended that date real quick. And I completely, my heart and everything led to the true twin flame just because he's always appearing in my life. And it's always asking me to go deeper into love and loving myself. So who wants to share their story? Anything familiar to them? Um, so like, I, yeah, completely agree with you. And I remember when I was watching, um, uh, the classes, like, I was like, oh my God, I resonate so much with Lydia. Um, cause like same, same, like almost to a T and like, I really noticed, um, that, can you guys hear that phone? No. Okay. Good. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and, uh, anyway, um, so the one thing that I really noticed is that um, my true twin flame always aligned with my healing, like would mirror it right back. Um, I would have like a huge like breakthrough and like I say, it would be in like communication and like my twin flame would like mirror that. I would have a big breakthrough in like intimacy with myself. And so like, like say for example, um, acceptance, like uh, I found, um, when I started really working on these like self-acceptance blocks, um, my twin flame was committing to me more and more. Um, and I was like, wow, like I'm, I like every time I heal, like it's just mirrored back. And so like, um, it is important to like say that like sometimes like a false twin flame can mirror things to you, but anybody can mirror things to you. But if it's very consistent and it's kind of like, I always found that it was kind of like, it was like a pro like you could see like progress and you could see the healing and those um eight like foundational like the eight um uh Please. foundations of um harmonious twin flame union I, you could you could kind of like see them progressing and like healing and you could see your twin flame like kind of like changing and like what i what i would say like you know is like a red flag is that um you know you're you're continuously healing and you're doing the work and um, the person that, you know, you think is your twin flame is really vibrating out. And like, um, I wouldn't say like, like, you know, like their life hasn't like gotten better, but like, because like sometimes, um, you know, the dark night of the soul happens or like, you know, they're, they're having their own process. But the one thing that I really noticed is that um, my twin flame was always mirroring that they were working through the same blocks. And they were always coming closer in one, one way or another. Yeah. I think one of the nine signs too, is that like, or maybe it's a false twin flame sign where it talks about how, um, yeah, it's a false, it talks about how a false twin flame isn't um, inclined to bring up your deepest core patterns, like your, your deepest fears. They're not, they don't want to do that because they just want to, be around all the good high energy they'd have no um intention on healing those misaligned core upsets with you uh, my true twin flame is the first and only one who was open to working through any upset that came up and wanted to work through it until we got to a place of peace because that is a core choice that I made within myself that no matter what upset came up in my reality, I was going to heal it until I got to a place of peace. And so he mirrored that to me from day one where like he literally said, if I do anything that upsets you or um, you feel like it makes you feel a certain way, please let me know. And I will work through it with you because you're not meant to work through upsets by yourself. And that was the first time where I was just like, I think we might be twin flames. Let me look at my love list because I was not prepared for that. <laughs> like, it shook me to my core because at that moment in time or up until that moment in time, I wasn't really looking at him as a twin flame. I was just enjoying my life. I was enjoying his presence and his company. And then when that came up, it was just kind of like, okay, I can't ignore this because this is the first person. And till this day, he is the only person who's willing to work through the most uncomfortable conversations I've ever had with anyone, um, the most uncomfortable uh, core beliefs that come up around uh, love and just things that we have learned from childhood. Uh, but because he's the only one who's been willing to work through those things, you do see 
that being mirrored back to you. Uh, and he also sees it himself. He sees that I am also mirroring to him his deepest core beliefs that may be out of alignment. And so he's been open to it because he sees the growth within him due to his relationship with me. And so it won't be, it won't continue being this one-sided relationship that you'll experience with a twin, a false twin flame. It'll become a connection where you both see the true value of what you both bring to each other with helping each other heal these misalignments. They will also see you as someone who has been helping them move to that next level in their spiritual growth. And they will have that even deeper attraction to you because you are building that trust with them and that foundation. Sweet. I love that. Um, that, that leads straight to the next sign, which I absolutely love. And I, I literally like relate to this as well is that your true twin flame will always love you. Like this one is like, ah, relief that like, even though they're mirroring to you all of your like darkest traumas and your like everything, they're doing it with love. This I've noticed a lot in my union as I've been moving through a lot of like childhood stuff and, and, and anxiousness, anxiety, and nervousness around love and intimacy. Um, you know, even when I'm like really triggered and really, really like hurt and I'm like projecting or, or, or saying something out of anger, I realize that my true twin flame has never pulled his love away. Like he might have like distanced himself or might have just kind of like withdrawn a little bit or silent just to give me the space to actually find support, find love because they're not responsible to actually love you there. They're always bringing you deeper into your heart so you can awaken, you can break open and you can bring love there. So it's because of him I'm very grateful for my growth so far is because of the you know, the love that was shown to me by not actually feeding my patterns, by not enabling my behavior. Um, that is like, I would say the biggest blessing for me in order to transform and transcend and ascend and all the going leveling up and everything is definitely due to their love. And um, I'm like forever grateful for that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, fant that's fantastic. Yeah, certainly. Um, well, it's a two-way thing, the love. Um, with your true twin flame, um, they remain integral to all your healing and the love deepens. It doesn't with someone that's not your true twin flame. They, they There comes a point where you can't go any deeper with them. But your true twin flame, you always, always go deeper together. Even if they're not right next to you, you're still going deeper together. And you know, this was the main difference. Yeah, it's it's a huge difference between my twin flame and the other two men that I knew that um, felt like a twin flame, and I can't believe they were twenty five and thirty years ago. Um, <clears throat> like with them, I always knew that they didn't love me. And um, one of them said that he did once, and he probably thought it in that moment, but. I didn't believe him for a moment because I mean it was completely meaningless and it was. But with with the true twin flame, you can it's a knowing. Your heart knows. And your heart has always known, even yeah, for people who didn't know who their twin flame was till later on they were revealed looking back with the benefit of hindsight. It's like um, yeah, there was always it was always there. Um, having said that, um, I've hit some deeper places of doubt and, and, uh, and yeah, I've been a bit paranoid. Oh, what if he doesn't? But there's been a lot of that coming through. I think in some of Kanisha's readings on the TFU YouTube channel. So it's certainly, um, definitely a collective thing that's being healed through at the moment. It's okay to find pockets of doubt and you'll find more as you go deeper and your coach will help you find these places of doubt so you can bring them <clears throat> to the surface and release them. All you need to do really is just feel through the doubt until it dissolves and comes to a state of greater knowing. Yeah, and another thing I've noticed um, 
Yeah, uh, before I came into the work, my Kim Flame wanted to have one of those uncomfortable conversations. And at the time, I was so not in a position to have that conversation. And I was like, oh, my God, what did I say? What, what do I say? And, and, then, and then you can't help thinking, oh, if I'd said really what was on my heart, maybe the outcome would have been a bit different. But my coach said, no, 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 it doesn't matter what you you said or not said back then the pattern would have still come to the surface and it would still have had to be cleared. And I realised I've had one hell of a lot of patterns to clear. And for um, quite a long time when I got into this work, um, I had no resistance to watching the classes like quite a few people do. Uh, not for me, I was just devouring the classes one after another, but I had quite a bit of resistance to doing the mirror exercise and going through the steps. And it's only about 13 months ago I realised that I hadn't been loving myself enough. I've been giving myself more like um, a trickle. And my twin flame had to mirror something very painful to actually give me a kick up the backside to actually just sit down and write it out every day. And... You don't need to wait for your twin flame to do something like that. You can, I mean, you can't avoid getting uh, triggered because that's the same as avoiding being loved. But you don't have to have really painful triggers if you keep on top of the healing work and the healing work of feeling your feelings every day and working through them. That way it can be a lot more compassionate and gentle. And um, yeah, I'm gonna hand over to someone else before I I go uh, go on a bit more about how bad my relationships w were in the past. I really <laughs> love what you touched on about um, moving through the doubt. I think a lot of people will go back and forth with like, "This is a false twin flame. This is a true twin flame. This is a false twin flame. This is a true twin flame." Um, I moved through that with my true twin flame, where there was a a period of time where I was just so numbed out that I had seen that he was holding the traits of a false twin flame because I was holding the traits of a false twin flame. I wasn't being completely um, everything that I needed for myself. And so he had to mirror those things back to me. And once I really looked at um, the signs of a true twin flame, I had to ask myself, am I doing all these things for myself? If I'm not, my twin flame cannot show up this way because you are one. And so as I really honored that process, um, he did come back around and did deeper reveal himself as my true twin flame. And that is something that is is really important is that you are really honoring the process of moving through the mirror exercise, moving through all of uh, the tools that you have in order to truly get clear on whether or not someone is your true twin flame or not, because that's an experience that you have to move through completely and all the way through. You also want to honor the fact that they're moving through an experience as well. And so releasing control is a big one on this journey where a lot of the times uh, I've done this myself where it's like, I need them to do something to prove to me that they're my twin flame. I need them. I just moved through this. I was upset with my twin flame because he was following an old connection. And I was like, what's the purpose of that? Why are you doing that? This is unnecessary. And he wouldn't budge here. And so I had to feel my feelings around it. I had to feel my feelings on what this other connection brought up for me and what it was mirroring to me because I know that everything is here to help my union and help us come into union. And as soon as I got clear on it, it helped me see where I was having an insecurity about not feeling enough. Um, not so much that I thought this person could take my twin flame, but it actually brought up a lot of insecurities around life purpose. I was really like surprised once I fully moved through it. And um, I finally got to this place where I was no longer triggered by this person and I no longer gave them my time and energy. And then two or three days later, my twin flame was like, so I unfollowed them. I, I did the thing. And I was like, oh, and he came to his own realization 
of why he needed to let go of that connection. It's not because I told him to, or not because I begged or plead or threw a fit about it. It's because I felt my feelings on it, which allowed him to now feel his feelings on it and make a choice that felt best for him. But at the core, we made the same core choice. We chose to let this connection go as a union because it no longer served our union the way that it did to help us get to these places. So you never need your twin flame to do anything or to prove anything to you in order for you to um, heal, you do the healing and then they show you. And so I think that's a lot of what people get stuck is um, they're waiting for their twin flame to do something in order for them to feel better, but it won't work that way. You'll stay in this energy of continuously feeling stuck or not seeing movement because they are you. If you're not moving and healing, neither are they. But if you are healing the core upset, so are they. You can never, ever, 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 ever do anything separate from your twin flame. It's not possible. And um, that's how you want to make sure that you are revealing your true twin flame is that you're truly revealing yourself. You're getting to the core of who you truly are as a divine being and really allowing yourself self to show up authentically. And you'll see that in return by your twin flame. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that because there's, I mean, that that's why a lot of the, when you come into the community and people are so attached to like who their twin flame is, it's like a little bit unhealthy because then they're not allowing themselves the time to actually sit with themselves to, to uh, heal and be able to have this clarity within themselves. So, you know, it's very important that that becomes priority to uh, love and heal and love yourself, heal, and get clear within. So then, you know, when the person, you, you're forever attracted and manifesting based on where you're at. So if you're really, really getting close to loving yourself and, and you know, being the most authentic, you could be genuinely um, yourself, of course, you are going to attract that. So that's why we are so, like, screaming. It's very important that, you know, you get support, you do the inner work, because your twin flame is you, um, you can't run away from them, you can't run away from yourself. So as soon as you do the inner work and you start, it becomes easier. I must say seven to eight years into it. And, you know, I'm, I'm still like many years ago, I'm still questioning whether my twin flame or the true twin flame is a false twin flame because, you know, I've loved myself this much and he needs to show me now this in order for me to go deeper with him to see if he's my true twin flame. Um, I've just realized that's all like nonsense throughout the years. Um, it's just a matter of just like the, the the more you heal, the more you release the big stuff and you go to the next layer of healing, the, the, the middle things, the bushes and instead of the big mountains and you're forever attracting your twin twin plate to, to fame. It just, it just gets so much easier to love yourself. And then when they appear, to just love them because you're not projecting. You're not waiting for this person to, to give you the love. You're already so busy loving yourself that their presence becomes so um, magnetic and so easy to be around because you're in a true place of peace and you know who you are. Like, I must say right now, I'm really in this place in my life where, um, you know, I'm going deeper into the work. The more and more I watch the classes, it's that I'm deepening my own uh, relationship with myself and my own relationship with the community, with my gurus. Um, and I know how much they really love me throughout the years. At first, I knew they loved me. But now I know they really, really love me because I really love myself. So it's not just your twin flame that shows you like your own reflection is it's it's everyone like everyone around you is always bringing you deeper to yourself but it's your twin flame that is like amplifying that um, mirror that the mirror effect that the self love. So I definitely do find that you know the more you do the work and the more you love yourself the mirroring becomes easier so then you're able to recognize your true twin flame without constantly having to question yourself or go crazy or just like keep posting or getting attached to uh, a person because of their looks or whatever so you know the best thing you can do for yourself is to heal so then you know the signs become clearer 
Yeah. Um, and I just like wanted to say like how like important it is to like get clear and like build your own like foundation on why you're doing this. Um, and so like, yeah, like most of us, like, you know, like some of, well, not most of us, like, um, some of us, like, you know, we find our twin flame and then you, you find this work, but some people, you know, they, they come to this work because like, they're looking for their perfect person. But, um, the point of this work is to like find yourself and heal yourself. So like, it's really important to get clear that like, you know, I'm doing this whether it's going to be like this person that I think is my twin flame or it's somebody else. Like you get clear on like the value and like why, like the nitty gritty of like why you want to go through this um, journey. Because like, if you're constantly like feeling attached to a certain person and like, they're like further than you could ever think, like, you know, they're nowhere to be seen. That's going to be really hard to give you that like um, uh, encouragement and courage to move through the, some of these blocks because like um you know these blocks they move you really far into yourself and like you're digging really deep and they can be quite triggering and so if you don't have like a strong like foundation and like a really like um solid reason for being on this journey it might be easier to like you know be like oh whatever like I put my hands up and I quit so like I really agree Lydia like it's really important to get that clarity that this is about loving yourself and healing and like yeah you do get your twin flame at the end of it and like but like that's like it's it's like the icing on the cake and um I think that like the thing like learning between like a false twin flame and a true twin flame is like when you actually get to that point and you're healing and like you're um like understanding of what the twin flame connection is and that that you um it doesn't necessarily have to be that person because it's actually like it's the essence of that person like you know like um that is why you're doing it then that's going to move you and progress you a lot faster than when you're attached to a certain person and it's going to make the blocks that you move through a lot easier and more gentle well not more gentle but like they're not going to feel as rough if you're like if you know that like you know you're not like putting an attachment or a expectation on who or what and like how your union unfolds. Yeah. Something I hear all the, um, in my consciousness all the time is when Jeff said that he surrenders Shalia all the time. He's like, I just surrender her back to God. I release attachment to her. He's like, especially when she's showing up in a way that I don't like, I heal it within myself. And then I'm like, my true twin flame is going to show up this way. And then here comes Shalia showing up in the way that he just healed and declared in his heart. But that's like the truth of it is that even if you're in harmonious union, even if you're married to your twin flame, there is no appropriate reason to ever attach to them and start to look to them as your source. I need you to show up this way. I need you to do this or that. It's not where you get your love from. It's God. And so if you can practice, um, my coach says this all the time, shout out to Chrissy, non-radical attachment, you will find that, like Katie said, things will be much smoother. Things will flow because you're not attaching to how things or people show up. You're truly just honoring the energy you're truly choosing god and to allow god to move through anything and everyone and so as you do that you will see because your twin flame is your direct reflection of your relationship with god that they're only ever pointing to a place that desires more love or attention and when you truly do give yourself that love and attention your twin flame naturally shows up in that space they can't ever not show up in that space and it's really important to again let go of that attachment and trust the process it's going to be for me one of the biggest lessons I've had to learn is let go of control and trust the process <laughs> like you have to let go of trying to control things or trying to make things happen in the way that you think it's supposed to or in the timing that you think it's supposed to when you really do let go of control and attachment to how it's going to unfold that's when those things just kind of start coming in just like that Yeah, oh um um have we got any questions in the chat? Yeah, I I agree with what you say there. Um your twin flame is not a separate person. They can't do anything independently. But nothing has to happen between you. It's just getting to that vibration 
that state of consciousness on the inside first and then the outside will fall into place. But you can't try and manipulate the outside to look how you want it to. If you haven't attained the vibration on the inside, it's going to feel really bad. Hmm. Absolutely. Katie, is there any questions in the open forum? Do you know? Um, no. Okay. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's all the time that we have for today. Um, I felt like that was a great discussion. So thanks, ladies. And yeah. thank you, everyone. And we hope you have a great Friday. Bye. Happy Bye. weekend. Bye. <laughs>